Hey everyone, today we're checking in with the latest AI video tools and technology. I've got the fastest AI video generator plus a new image to video generator that looks really promising. Plus we're gonna take a look at NVIDIA's latest research on text to image with consistency. Some cool AI tools from Google that you can use right now. Okay, let's dive in. Kicking off, we have super fast AI video generation. Not quite real time yet, but definitely on the road to it. Animate LCM is a new video model that utilizes latent consistency models, which is that thing that we've seen in everything from Korea to Leonardo, where you can sort of sketch something in and alongside of a prompt to get near real time results. Now, the problem with trying to use a standard LCM to animate is that there isn't a lot of consistency between frames. There, I mean, there is consistency. It just tends to warp and shift a lot. So the team at Animate LCM have come up with a solution. That involves a process called decoupling, where the visual information and the motion information are separated into two different paths. So how fast is it? Well, it's actually pretty fast. You can actually try out demos over on Replicate or on Hugging Face. I'm using the Replicate version here, which is actually preloaded with the Animate LCM. LCM, so everything's going to kind of have an animated look. Uh, the prompt here is a woman sitting in a cafe with a cup of coffee and the negative prompt of blurry and morphing. So I'm going to hit run. And normally I don't like to do these in real time, but that's kind of the point here. Uh, you can see we're actually up to 75% already, 100%, and then and now we're done. Now, granted, our output does have some of our AI video weirdness, namely in that she seems to be, I guess, pounding an espresso and she's got like a latte over here. I have no problem with that, just for the record. But as you can see, the video was generated in 7.57 seconds, which is pretty fast. For comparison's sake, a very similar prompt on Pika took us one minute and two seconds to generate. LCM Animate does support image to video with a number of examples provided over on the project page, which I'll have linked down below. And additionally, it does support control net type features. So you could use a reference video to get something like a, you know, TikTok dancing stormtrooper, uh, which I don't know if anyone needs. Well, maybe it would have made Rebel Moon better. Animate LCM is currently only outputting two second videos, which is kind of funny because it's like a third of the time that it actually takes to make the video. Uh, but I expect that number to come up as, you know, it moves out of demo phase. Moving on, we have a new image to video model called Dynamic Crafter. Uh, uh, this one looks pretty promising. In the paper, they actually kind of flex pretty hard, uh, stating that recent studies on video diffusion models such as Video Composer and ITV Gen XL are incompetent. Their solution involves dual streaming, which does seem to be a recurring theme with this current crop of AI video generators. The basic idea here is that there is one stream in which your reference image is taken through a clip interrogator so that the model has an understanding of what it's looking at. Meanwhile, your text prompt runs down another stream, which is met with a fine-tuned guidance model. Uh, those two streams are then put back together, resulting in a much more temporally coherent video output. Overall, I do think it looks pretty good. There's this robot walking through a destroyed city. Um, the walk cycle looks pretty solid. Over on Replicate, we have another example that looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, her face isn't morphing into the Predator or anything. Shootout looks pretty good. Uh, here, of course, is the cover to the Beatles Abbey Road with the prompt, some people walking across the road some people come on it's the Beatles have some respect uh, video composer is of course a bit of a mess uh, Pika does sort of a weird thing with like Paul and Ringo kind of moonwalking here and George is kind of doing the pee pee dance and while I wouldn't necessarily say dynamic crafter is like blowing me away in terms of its output it is you know still at least coherent overall dynamic crafter does look very promising here's a couple more shootouts uh, against stable diffusion video and Pika labs now granted I don't know which Stable Diffusion version that they're using or Pika Labs version that they're using. Again, much like Animate LCM, we're still in the two second range, uh, but the code for Dynamic Crafter is available uh, and you can try it out again over on Hugging Face or on Replicate. I should note that unlike Animate LCM, this one does take a lot longer. Uh, over on Replicate, this one ran three minutes and 81 seconds as opposed to the seven seconds in Animate LCM. Sliding over to consistency in images, NVIDIA have released a paper with code coming soon for Consistory, which I mean, chef's kiss on that name. I look at a lot of these and anytime that I run across one with a clever name, I mean, two points to Gryffindor. So what's interesting about this is that it's consistency in terms of style and subject without any training. The TLDR here, and let's face it, that's a lot of R, is that in the initial generation, a mask is created around the subject. Um, 
the model then holds onto that mask and is able to then inject it into future generations. They showcase their idea of masking, taking it up against other models where you can see that, you know, other models either like in this lore example, uh, it just stays the hedgehog. It does not change into uh, flowers or in the open or in a meadow or in this example where stylistically the hedgehog keeps changing. We do have pose control here as well as showcased with these images of uh, the Great British Bake Off's Paul Hollywood. I mean, that's who he looks like to me. And it does not necessarily have to be a character, but can be items and or objects as well. Now to nitpick a little bit in some of the other examples, especially in the photorealistic ones, um, yeah, there's consistency, but not full consistency. For example, taking our guy here and here, I'm willing to let it slide. The shirt definitely does change. Uh, but by the time we hit the third image, I mean, he has definitely been hitting the gym. You know, I guess he kind of deserves that cake. Definitely some problems in consistency with hair as well uh, between these three images. And also who holds a fork like that? But look, despite those nitpicks, we are clearly on the road to consistent characters and it won't be long before we're joining this old timer at the bar and double fisting along with him. Rolling over to the Google side of things, Google has released some tools that we can actually play with. I know, right? I mean, the big news is that Gemini Ultra will be released later this week. I will have a full breakdown of that once that does come out. But in the meantime, if you wanna play around with their new image generation model or a really cool music generation model, you can do so over at labs.google. So the image generator is ImageFX and it does actually some kind of interesting things. So I'm not gonna call this new image model groundbreaking, but it does do one thing that is really cool. So nabbing this gimme off of the Mid Journey community feed, uh, we're gonna port this back over. And running that prompt as is, we get these images, which, um, you know, actually, I mean, they're not terrible. This one's kind of cool. I actually kind of like this one a lot. Um, but what I do think is interesting is that each one of these then becomes a pull down in which you can sort of change your idea around, which is kind of cool. So here's another set where you're sort of iterating on that idea. Let's change the lo-fi style out to hyper-realism and just leave everything as is and see what happens. We get some stuff like this, which actually isn't starting to look bad. Uh, now, what's interesting is from here, you can come down and lock your seed and then swaps it out to, let's say, impressionism. Uh, let's say it's with pets. So it's a complex album cover with pets. And with that, this image becomes this. This image becomes this. And this image becomes this, where I guess because we said pets, it turned her into a lion. Eh, still works though. So we're still lacking a lot of basic functionality here. Like there's no way to change the aspect ratio, for example. And, you know, there is no way to in or out painting. Basically you prompt and you get what you get. But I will say the idea of being able to play around with your prompt and sort of explore things is actually a really cool idea. The other cool thing that's available to you is on the music side of things. So you can just come down into this tab and hit music effects, prompt for something that you wanna hear and it will generate for you. And it sounds really good. And just like with our image generator, we can actually change things around. So we can change this to a 1970s rock song. Uh, the tempo is actually interesting too, because you actually have a slider here that you can bring things up. I did get an output that I was really happy with when I was riffing on the idea of the Pirates of the Caribbean theme, uh, namely with things like fast orchestral Hollywood blockbuster, excitement, sense of wonder. Uh, let's give a listen to that real quick. <laughs> Overall, that is pretty good. There's still some like AI fuzziness in the mid band frequency, but I think if you were using this as like temp score or background music, you could probably get away with it. Both image effects and music effects are available over at labs.google and are completely free. With Gemini Ultra being released later this week, I'm curious to see if either of those models are going to get updated or just to see how they're going to be incorporated into Gemini Ultra. Uh, like I said, I'll be back later this week with a full look at Gemini Ultra. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.